The Buff Dude's home workouts are back. Here it is. As you can see, very simple. Half rack, some dumbbells, a barbell. That's all you need, baby. In the open, fresh air. And the smell of pumped muscles. <laughs> This is stage one of our newly released home gym plan. Pick it up, link in description, or just follow along. It's up to you. We're gonna be doing a push-pull. Today is going to be push. Here we go, we're getting started with squats. My reflections in your guys' <laughs> skin. Me flexing. Brandon's always there somewhere. Yeah. <laughs> He's like Obi-Wan, Brandon Obi. <laughs> Big pushing movement. Majority is working with the legs, but it is really a full body. We're still tracking a lot of core, even upper body holding that bar to the body. So there's a lot going on in this exercise, a lot of muscles engaged. That's why we're starting off with squats. Definitely wind ya. Takes a lot of effort, takes a lot of energy. It's all about adjusting, it's all about adapting. It's all about getting better, baby. <laughs> the horse trough is back in business, but I gotta make it official. Ugh. Dude's country. Buff dude's country, baby. I want to make sure it's nice and centered because the next one is going to be bench press. Another big pressing motion. Now we're working on chest. A little triceps, anterior delts, but primarily upper body. Here we go. Keep it simple. That's our philosophy when it comes to training. That's our philosophy when it comes to eating. That's pretty much our philosophy when it comes to life. It makes things uh, a lot less complicated and there's a lot less stress and you still get amazing results that's the good thing sometimes you don't want to overanalyze everything you just want to keep it basic get it done and keep going Ugh. This is not mentioned in the plan, but usually we like to start every single exercise with a warm-up It's a good way to feel it out Get your body accustomed to it. Uh, see where you're at that day because every day can feel a little bit different. Sometimes you're able to lift more, sometimes less. So we like to warm up with every exercise to really feel where we're at. It's uh, something that we really enjoy and something that we would recommend as well. You don't see it in the plan, but you're hearing it from the buff dude's mouth themselves. That's usually what we do. Like I was saying, warm up's always a good idea. Kind of feel where you're at, but we highly recommend tracking your weights so that way you know where you're going each week. Let's say 135 is your weight, you're hitting that 10 rep range and you're reaching failure or fatigue at that rep range. Well, try to increase the weight just slightly, maybe five pounds, so that way maybe you can only get eight reps, nine reps. The next week uh, you get 10 reps, so then you increase it again. So you're constantly seeing your progression through what you track and you also have a better idea of where to start. Warm-up sets, absolutely. Doesn't matter if you know you can put 315 on the bench. Warm-up really light. It's very necessary. Feel out the motion, get used to it again, so that way when you pack on the weight, you've already kind of perfected that again. You feel comfortable with it, feel confident, and there you go, go from there. I remember those, pack those shoulders nice and tight. Help stabilize them, better press. Main point of contact is gonna be your upper back, your hips, and your feet. So remember those three things. Really squeeze that bar. Try to kind of act like you're bending the bar. It's gonna drop your elbows slightly, but it's gonna help tuck them in to really stabilize the bar and the position there. And that's helped quite a bit for me. Um, in the beginning, you can kind of have your shoulders everywhere, throw you out balance, core's not tight or bracing well. All of a sudden, you can feel some pain or discomfort in your shoulders, which can happen if you just don't brace hard enough. If you don't pack those shoulders or track the scapula, and squeeze that bar. It's gonna help just contract all the muscles, stabilize the movement, you're gonna feel a hell of a lot stronger. <sighs> Feeling damn good. Thank you, Broden. Yeah. I'm starting to feel a little rain. It's a little overcast today. And that usually means that Broden is crying tears of joy at what a magnificent workout his two creations are engaging in. Tastes a little bit like urine. Next exercise is walking lunges. One of our favorite, an excellent leg exercise. Working on strength, also a little bit of cardiovascular as well. As you can see, we got this long gravel driveway. It's good, but it's not so good on the knees. So we're gonna be busting out some special equipment for this exercise. Oh yeah, comfortable. Streamline, extremely effective, yeah. 
There is something to be said for where you work out as well. I personally love the outdoor workouts. They make me feel so damn good. Get that fresh air. Uh, it's really that mind muscle connection in so many ways because if you feel good, chances are you're gonna have a really good workout. If you feel uncomfortable, if you get into a big crowded, sweaty gym a lot of times i've walked in the door and i've wanted to turn right back around and walked out of course i've had a lot of good experiences in commercial gyms as well but that's really goes to show you your attitude or your surroundings can really influence your workout so if you haven't done it give it a shot you may surprise yourself I've always felt pretty good with overhead pressing definitely one of my stronger lifts I feel comfortable with it really helps is keeping the legs straight locked out but not loose, really flexing and flexing the quads, your glutes, kind of pushing your glutes forward, extending your hips, and that'll help stabilize your lower body, but also really bracing your core with that lift will really help it. But you always gotta get that nice pacing down your breathing, deep breath, hold through the push, and then slowly exhale, but keeping a tight core as you lower it down. So, whew, damn good, another big pushing motion, getting those shoulders, oh yeah, baby. Wrapping up day one with ab rollouts, one of our favorite core exercises, really easy setup here. As you can see, using the barbell, of course you wanna use the round plates. Anything else, you're gonna have a little bit of a bad time. If you got like the hex plate, something like that. But it's just an amazing exercise. Ew. That wraps up day one. It's time to celebrate. But this is just the beginning. Mmm. Ah, tastes like victory. You are seeing the creation of a buff dude right before your very eyes. Yeah. Lesson number one, you need good music. What's your favorite song? Seek and Destroy. That is a really good workout song. <laughs> you got him right. You have excellent taste. <laughs> Grab your hands. Knees a little bit more bent. Yep, back straight, back straight. <laughs> okay, it's like teaching our dad how to deadlift. <laughs> <laughs> it is pull day. Now the mechanics of the deadlift is not just pull. You do have to remember there's leg drive specifically in the beginning of the lift. Um, once the bar is approaching around the knee area, that's when you really begin the pull. And this one is predominantly a posterior chain and that's why usually it's considered more of a pulling exercise because it's working on the hamstrings and the back. And with the back, you really want to tense the lats as much as you can to hold the bar really tight. And this is gonna help contract the muscles that are stabilizing the movement. And that will help you uh, not bend your back too much. So that way the back is straight, it's rigid, and it is able to really hold that weight and very stable and safe. So amazing exercise. Uh, that's why we're starting the pull day with the deadlift, baby. Yeah. You gotta enjoy the process. You don't wanna do anything that feels like a slog. Now more than ever, it seems like with so many fitness personalities online, a lot of them are trying to say this way is the only way. They're trying to discredit everyone else in the process. What we say, just do something that you yourself enjoy doing because that way you're gonna make sure that you make it a lifestyle. It's not just something that you do a little bit, you hate every second of it. You wanna enjoy it because we wanna be doing this when we're in our 60s, our 80s, hell, even if our 90s, if, uh, if we make it that long. And why do something that long that you don't even enjoy? So are you enjoying this right now, Brennan? No. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's kind of hard to enjoy it, you know, like right after deadlift as you're trying to catch your breath, but it's the reward though, you know. It's hard as hell when you're doing it, but you know, because you're doing this, you're improving, you're making yourself better, and in the long run, you feel better. So, yeah, you you learn to love the pain. Pain is pleasure. Oh yeah, good old Ben of a Rose. Probably one of the best for the back other than maybe pull-ups, part of the golden five. Uh, there's a few different ways you can do this. You can do it from a dead stop position, meaning that each rep starts from the floor. What you'll have to do is get a little bit more of a bend over position where your upper body is almost parallel with the floor. So depending on your flexibility, that can be kind of difficult or if you're taller. So we're doing it from um, that constant tension. Instead of going all the way down the floor, we'll drop it down to get that full extension in the arms, do a bit of stretch in the lats and then pull it straight back up. What that does, it puts a little bit more contraction and tension in the lower back, but as long as you're safe, you're okay. And what I try to do and think about is 
keeping the bar midfoot. So instead of bending over where the bar at the edge of your toes, what this is gonna do is kind of wanna pull, your for, pull you forward, rounding the lower back. What we do is bring that bar closer so you can push your hips back and straighten that back, keeping it neutral and it's more stable and more safe too. So excellent exercise, highly recommend it. It definitely works. Some serious hamstring activation in those. What you'll notice on the way down, a very strict and difficult eccentric motion, meaning you're really trying to hold uh, and elongate those muscles on the way down. So it's a negative motion there. So the hamstrings are, they're really trying to hold that position, but naturally it's very hard to hold your whole body weight. So they're gonna slowly lengthen. And then once you reach the, reach the bottom position, that's when you contract them and uh, a concentric contract, meaning they're shortening to bring your body up. So two big movements, which is the eccentric and concentric, both stressed a lot in this, and that's what makes it so effective. Great thing is just body weight. Um, obviously, if you're very advanced, you can always add weight too. Or if you're getting the hang of it, you can always add a band, you know, loop it around so you can kind of hold the band to help spot yourself. Um, so you can do a lot with this exercise and that's why we love it. Little dumbbell face pulls, great variation of the cable face pulls working on the posterior deltoids, also the trapezius. Good thing about the dumbbells, very adjustable. So depending on the width, um, also kind of position your hands, go overhand, you can kind of do more of a neutral grip so your thumbs are facing up. So you kind of switch it up a little bit depending on how it feels for you and really how, you know, your belt, your morphology. So that's a good thing about dumbbells. Uh, very adjustable, and that's why we're doing it with the dumbbells. Excellent exercise, feels damn good, baby. Suitcase carry, excellent core strengthening exercise. As you can tell, it's more of an isometric because you have to hold a position for a certain amount of time. And the time in this is gonna be actually 10 meters one way, 10 meters the next after you switch sides there. And what you're doing is really activating the obliques because they're gonna have to contract to pull the spine to center line and hold that position, but also a lot in the gluteus medius and minimus as well because as you place yourself on one foot walking forward, those muscles and your glutes are gonna have to balance the hips out. So a lot going on in this exercise, as well as grip, your traps being contracted to stabilize the movement. Amazing exercise, highly recommended. Really helping to strengthen that core, which carries over into deadlifts, bench press, squats, anything really that you have to brace those muscles that surround the spine to help stabilize the spine and keep it nice and rigid and neutral. Day three, we're back to push. We took a day off between the four days that it comprise stage one. Give ourselves a little bit time to rest, recover. We're getting right back into it with front squats, putting a little bit more emphasis on your quads as you're gonna be more in a vertical position. And with this exercise, you kind of have to be, because as you notice, it's front loaded. So you have to make sure and stay vertical because of course, if you lean forward too far, such as what you may do with a traditional squat wall, the bar is gonna roll off. So stability plays a part. There's of course two ways of doing it. You can do it the standard way as you see me doing it now, or you could always do it the cross way like this. In my personal opinion, it's just an exercise that takes a while to get comfortable with. Um, some of them come really naturally. To me, this one took a little bit of practice. So of course, as always, if you're feeling a little unsure, you can always just practice with body weight, go into the bar, and then there's some other exercises as well. If you're just not feeling this at all, such as goblet squats, which can be a great alternative. That's the grass, baby. Yeah. Uh, I lost you there for a second. <laughs> <laughs> I went up and Brandon stayed down. <laughs> oh man. Like Hudson was saying, it, gives, it takes a while to get used to, but once you have it down, it feels damn good. Uh, ankle mobility can be a thing for these for sure. So some people feel a little bit more comfortable having a bit of an elevated heel, either from a lifting shoe or maybe a plate, whatever that's inch, two inches, whatever it is can help you get in that more vertical torso, but working into, as you can see now, shoeless uh, is great, because then you know your ankle mobility is there, hips, everything lines up, it feels good. Incline press. Pretty much the same uh, mindset when you do a flat press. Pack those shoulders tight, really the main point of contact is your feet, your hips, or your butt, and your upper back. Squeeze those shoulders together, 
and uh, tense that core, baby. Feels good. Uh, step ups. Unilateral motion, really concentrate on one leg, hitting the quads, the glutes, a little bit of that balance, stability for sure. You know, it's funny too, whenever you're doing exercises like this, typically you'll be like, it's all about my legs, that push, the contraction, quads, glutes. But sometimes you gotta think outside the box a little bit when you're performing something, especially like this. Yes, it's compound movement, meaning it's working the hip joint, the knee joint, but you're introducing dumbbells, you're grasping two dumbbells, so, if you think about it, not just the legs, it's your grip, it's your upper back, because you're kind of squeezing the dumbbells tight with the traps to help stabilize and balance yourself. If it's just loose, it's gonna throw you out balance because you're not controlling the dumbbells. Squeeze your traps tight, squeeze the grip. It kind of reverberates down all the way up and down the body. So really thinking about all the muscles working together because that's what's really happening in especially compound movements. And that's really gonna help you out in the long run. And it definitely helps out with this. We're going old school, baby. Got the cutoff, we got the jorts, we got the sandals or shoeless, you know, working out in the sun. This is what it's all about. Feels good. Just taking it back to its raw form. Dumbbells, barbells, shorty shorts, and no shoes. We're back to rollouts. Can't forget the core. That wraps up day three push. Final day coming up. Pull day four. Here we go. Final day of stage one. Here we go. We are back to pull. We're starting with deadlifts. Major compound. Three sets, 10 reps. That has been the tradition throughout the entire stage. We're not breaking it now. Here we go. Let's end this stage with a bang, baby, yeah. The grip can really become an issue because that was honestly what was giving out even more so than uh, my legs and back. So you can use wrist straps if you want. But again, it's also a great exercise for developing grip strength. My favorite upper body body weight exercise, pull-ups. We finally got to it, man. This is a tough one. So having a little trouble, of course, you can always do band assisted pull-ups. You wrap a band around the bar. Put it around your knee, that can help out a lot. Of course, you can do negatives, jump into the top position, slowly let yourself down. There's also inverted rows, so a lot of options there. If the pull-up is still proving to be too much of a problem, but it's an exercise we highly recommend you have in your lifting regimen. It's done us a whole lot of favors in the past, and that's why we continue to implement it in all of our training programs. Finally, a really tall pull-up bar. You can actually pretty much get a nice stretch without touching the ground. That's pretty rare, both over six feet, so nice to have this good activation, baby. Especially after deadlifts, really feeling these lats activate. Many deadlifts, a few things can go wrong in this. Trying to act like you're reaching for the floor, not really your goal. Uh, keep your shoulders back tight. You really wanna squeeze your lats and really push your hips back, creating a small arch in your lower back, and this is gonna create a hell of a lot more stretch in the hamstrings and glutes, and that's what you're really aiming for. It's not how low you can go as far as reaching the floor with the bar. Uh, it's really how much stretch you can create in your hamstrings. On the eccentric motion, meaning you're bringing the barbell down, you know, that full stretch, and then concentrically contracting, shortening your hamstrings to bring it up to the top position, squeeze, and then repeat. Excellent exercise for building that hamstring and glute strength. Sometimes you gotta dress the part. It helps out, gets that mental, psychological buffness going. Oh yeah! You know, and I have a particular bone to pick with Marvel Studios for not casting this man as the next Hercules. <laughs> I mean, this guy was Kratos. He was Mario. But most importantly, he's a buff dude. <laughs> yeah! <laughs> Uh, that's one heavy suitcase. <laughs> I planned on wrapping up the end of stage one with a jump in the ice bath. The same one that uh, is actually from Southern California, if any of you watch our original backyard workout videos. But that's what happens when you have kids. Um, I guess they thought it might be fun to dump a whole bunch of dirt and rocks in it. So um, I got some kids to scold. So hope you enjoyed stage one of the home workout plan. See you next time. Yeah. yeah.